the breaking of the bow in the sacrificial arena. <coughs> After leaving the florist's place, Krishna and Balaram saw a hunchbacked young woman carrying a dish of sandalwood pulp through the streets. Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. He wanted to make all his companions joyous by cutting a joke with the hunchbacked woman. Krishna addressed her. O oh, tall young woman, who are you? Tell me, for whom are you carrying this sandalwood pulp in your hand? I think you should offer this sandalwood to me. And if you do so, I'm sure you will be fortunate. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he knew everything about the hunchback. By his inquiry, he indicated that there was no use in serving a demon. She would do better to serve Krishna and Balaram and get an immediate result of the service. The woman replied to Krishna, My dear Shyamasundara, Dear beautiful dark boy, you may know that I am engaged as a maidservant of Kamsa. I am supplying him pulp of sandalwood daily. The king is very much pleased with me for supplying this nice thing, but now I see that there is no one who can better be served by this pulp of sandalwood than you two brothers. Being captivated by the beautiful features of Krishna and Balaram, they're talking, they're smiling, they're glancing, and their other activities. The hunchback woman began to smear all the pulp of sandalwood over their bodies with great satisfaction and devotion. The two transcendental brothers, Krishna and Balaram, were naturally beautiful and had beautiful complexions, and they were nicely dressed in colorful garments. The upper portions of their bodies were already very attractive, and when the hunchbacked woman smeared their bodies with sandalwood pulp, they looked even more beautiful. Krishna was very much pleased by this service, and he began to consider how to reward her. In other words, in order to draw the attention of the Lord, the Krishna conscious devotee has to serve him in great devotion and lo love. <clears throat> great love and devotion. Krishna cannot be pleased by any action other than transcendental loving service unto him. Thinking like this, Lord Krishna pressed the feet of the hunchbacked woman with his toes and capturing her cheeks with his fingers gave her a jerk in order to make her straight. At once the hunchbacked woman became a beautiful straight girl with broad hips, thin waist and very nice well-shaped breasts. Since Krishna was pleased with the service of the hunchbacked woman, and since she was touched by Krishna's hands, she became the most beautiful girl among women. This incident shows that by serving Krishna, the devotee immediately becomes elevated to the most exalted position in all respects. Devotional service is so potent that anyone who takes to it becomes qualified with all godly qualities. Krishna was attracted to the hunchbacked woman not for her beauty, but for her service. As soon as she rendered service, she immediately became the most beautiful woman. A Krishna conscious person does not have to be qualified or beautiful. After becoming Krishna conscious and rendering service unto Krishna, he becomes very much qualified and beautiful. When the, women, when the woman was turned by Krishna's favor into an exquisitely beautiful young girl, 
she, she naturally felt very much obliged to Krishna. And she was also attracted by his beauty. Without hesitation, <clears throat> she caught the rear part of his cloth and began to pull it. She smiled flirtatiously and admitted that she was agitated by lusty desires. She forgot that she was on the street and before the elder brother of Krishna and his friends. She frankly proposed to Krishna, My dear hero, I cannot leave you in this way. You must come to my place. I am already very much attracted to your beauty, so I must receive you well, and since you are the best among males, you must also be very kind upon me. In plain words, she proposed that Krishna come to her home and satisfy her lusty desires. Krishna, of course, felt a little bit embarrassed in front of his elder brother Balaram, but he knew that the girl was simple and attracted. Therefore, he simply smiled at her words. Looking towards his coward boyfriends, he replied to the girl, My dear beautiful girl, I'm very much pleased by your invitation, and I must come to your home after finishing my other business here. Such a beautiful girl as you are the only means of solace for persons like us who are away from home and not married. Certainly a suitable girlfriend like you can give us relief from all kinds of mental agitation. Krishna satisfied the girl in this way with sweet words. Leaving her there, he proceeded down the street of the marketplace where the, where the citizens were prepared to receive him with various kinds of presentations, especially betel nuts, flowers, and sandalwood pulp. The mercantile men in the market worshipped Krishna and Balaram with great respect. When Krishna was passing through the street, all the women in the surrounding houses came to see him, and some of the younger ones almost fainted, being captivated by his beauty. Their hair and tight clothing loosened, and they forgot where they were standing. Krishna next inquired from the citizens as to the location of the place of sacrifice. Kamsa had arranged for the sacrifice called Dhanuryagna, and to designate this particular sacrifice, he had placed a big bow near the sacrificial altar. The bow was very big and wonderful, and resembled a rainbow in the sky. Within the sacrificial arena, this bow was protected by many constables and watchmen engaged by King Kamsa. As Krishna and Balaram approached the bow, they were warned not to go nearer, but Krishna ignored this warning. He forcibly went up and immediately took the bow in his left hand. After stringing the bow in the presence of the crowd, he drew it and broke it at the middle into two parts, exactly as an elephant breaks sugarcane in the field. Everyone present appreciated Krishna's power. The sound of the bow cracking filled both sky and land and was heard by Kamsa. When Kamsa heard what had happened, he began to fear for his life. The caretakers of the bow, who were standing by watching, became very angry, and with their respective weapons in hand, they rushed towards Krishna, shouting, Arrest him! Arrest him! Kill him! Kill him! Krishna and Balaram were surrounded. When they understood the sinister motives of the guards, they became angry 
and taking up the two pieces of the broken bow, they began to beat down all of Kamsa's caretakers. While this turmoil was going on, Kamsa sent a small group of troops to assist the caretakers. But Krishna and Balaram fought with them also and killed them. After this, Krishna did not proceed further into the sacrificial arena, but went out the gate and proceeded toward their resting camp. Along the way, he visited various places in Mathura city with great delight. Seeing the activities and wonderful prowess of Krishna, all the citizens of Mathura began to consider the two brothers to be demigods who had come down to Mathura, and they all looked upon them with great astonishment. The two brothers strolled carefree in, in the street, not caring for the law and order of Kamsa. As sunset approached, Krishna, Balaram and their coward boyfriends went to the outskirts of the city where all their carts were assembled. Thus Krishna and Balaram gave some preliminary hints of their arrival to Kamsa and he could understand what severe type of danger was awaiting him the next day in the sacrificial arena. When Krishna and Balaram had been going from Vrindavan to Mathura the inhabitants of Vrindavan had imagined the great fortune of the citizens of Mathura in being able to see the wonderful beauty of Krishna, who is worshipped by his pure devotees as well as the goddess of fortune. The fantasies of the residents of Vrindavan were now actually realized, for the citizens of Mathura became fully satisfied by seeing Krishna. When Krishna returned to his camp, he was taken care of by servants who washed his lotus feet, gave him a nice seat and offered him milk and palatable dishes. After taking supper and thinking of the next day's program, he very peacefully took rest. Thus he passed the night there. On the other side, when Kamsa came to understand about the breaking of his wonderful bow and the killing of the caretakers and souls by Krishna, he could partially realize the power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He could realize that the eighth son of Devaki had appeared and that now his death was imminent. Thinking of his imminent death, he was restless the entire night. He began to have many inauspicious visions and he could understand that Krishna and Balaram who had approached the precincts of the city were his messengers of death. Kamsa saw various kinds of inauspicious signs while both awake and dreaming. When he looked in the mirror he could not see his head although the head was actually present. He saw the luminaries in the sky in double, although there was only one set factually. He began to see holes in his shadow and he heard a high buzzing sound within his ears. All the trees before him appeared to be made of gold and he could not see his own footprints in dust or muddy clay. In dreams, he saw various kinds of ghosts being carried in a carriage drawn by donkeys. He also dreamed that someone gave him poison and he was drinking it. He dreamed also that he was going naked with a garland of flowers and was smearing oil all over his body. Thus, as Kamsa saw various signs of death while both awake and sleeping, he could understand that death was certain. And thus, in great anxiety, he could not rest that night. Just after the night expired, he busily arranged for the wrestling match. The wrestling arena was nicely cleansed and decorated with flags, festoons and flowers and the match was announced by the beating of kettle drums. 
The platform appeared very beautiful due to streamers and flags. Different types of galleries were arranged for respectable persons, kings, brahmanas and kshatriyas. The various kings had reserved thrones and others had arranged seats also. Kamsa finally arrived, accompanied by various ministers and secretaries, and he sat on the raised platform especially meant for him. Unfortunately, although he was sitting in the center of all his governing executive heads, his heart was palpitating in fear of death. Cruel death evidently does not care even for a person as powerful as Kamsa. When death comes, it does not care for anyone's exalted position. When everything was completed, the wrestlers, who were to exhibit their skills before the assembly, walked into the arena. They were decorated with nice ornaments and dress. Some of the famous wrestlers were Chanura, Mushtika, Shala, Kuta and Toshala. Being enlivened by the musical concert, they passed through, through with great alacrity. All the respectable coward men who came from Vrindavan, headed by Nanda, were also welcomed by Kamsa. After presenting Kamsa with the milk products they had brought with them, the coward men also took their respective seats by the side of the king on a platform on a platform especially meant for them. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 42nd chapter of Krishna, the breaking of the bow in the sacrificial arena. Shri Chaitanya Mano Pistam Stapitam Jaina Putale Shayam Rupa Kodamayam Tadati Shapadantikam Pandehang Shri Guru Shri Jutta Padakamanan Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Shahagana Lolita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kam Shana Gaurangi Radhe Brindabhaneshari Prasha Panu Sute Devi Pranamami Hori Priye Bansha Kol Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindho Pyevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The chapter opens with the hmm, Krishna's meeting the hunchback woman who he hmm, was supplying sandalwood for King Kamsa. And Krishna said, this sandal would be better uh, given to me. So, uh, yes, she immediately agreed and smeared it over the bodies of Krishna Balaram. Krishna Balaram already looked beautiful, now they look more beautiful, smeared with uh, sandalwood pulp. And Krishna was very uh, pleased. Prabhupada comments that this is Krishna consciousness to render service with love and devotion. Uh, Krishna cannot be pleased by any action other than transcendental loving service unto him. So Krishna was pleased and he uh, stepped on her toes and jerked on her, uh, uh, and captured, as Prabhupada says, her cheeks and gave a jerk and she became a very beautiful, straight uh, woman. And when that happened, she when she was transformed in that way, she also uh, began expressing her lusty desires to Krishna. Uh, right there in front of Balaram, Krishna's elder brother, and right there on the street, she basically um, proposed to Krishna that you know, really you should come to my house and satisfy my lusty desires. And Krishna, although a little embarrassed, um, thought, well, she's really a simple girl. And so he said, um, sure, but not now. Uh, later we'll come. Then Krishna was passing through the city and as he proceeded through the marketplace, people were offering him uh, sandalwood pulp and betel nuts and flowers. Hmm. And the hmm, merchants worshipped Krishna Balaram with great respect. You can understand that means they gave something, they gave something, they gave, they all gave something. Here, take some bananas, here, take some something, something. Mm -hmm. And all the women in the surrounding houses came out to see Krishna and Balaram. Uh, and some of the young, younger girls were practically fainting. And then Krishna asked, where is this Dhanuryagya? He asked some directions, where is this mm, yagya taking place? So he was directed, there was a big bow. Um, established there and it was protected by many watchmen engaged by Kamsa. So Krishna and Balaram approached the bow, the, the watchmen warned them off, but Krishna ignored them and took the bow in his left hand and uh, strung it and drew it and when he drew it it just cracked right in the middle. As described, he broke the bow just as an elephant breaks sugar cane in the, the field. So then the caretakers became angry. They were there to protect the bow. Now the bow is broken. Uh, they're going to get in trouble also, I think. So they became angry. And weapons in hand, they rushed toward Krishna and Balaram to kill them. Hmm. They surrounded Krishna and Balaram, and Krishna and Balaram just dispatched them all. Kamsa sent reinforcements in the form of some troops, and Krishna dispatched them also.
And then Krishna didn't go any further. He just, um, all right, we, we, uh, we've put Kamsa on notice that we're here. And he proceeded out the gate to their camp, to uh, their resting camp. And the, the citizens were looking upon them as if they were Gods, as if Krishna and Balaram were demigods. And the brothers just strolled about the streets carefree, not concerned or worried about Kamsa and his uh, constables or his law. And they, as sunset approached, Krishna and Balaram and their coward friends went to the outskirts of the city where their uh, carts were assembled. And uh, in this way, Krishna gave some hints to Kamsa of coming attractions. When Krishna and Balaram had left Vrindavan, or were leaving Vrindavan, the mm, gopis especially were imagining or... Mm, What's the word? Anticipating uh, that when Krishna was in Mathura, then uh, there'd be, everybody would be drinking the honey of Krishna's beautiful face and uh, all the nectar would be going their way. And now it, it actually happened. Uh, the Mathura Vasis were fully satisfied, Prabhupada says, by seeing Krishna. So then Krishna returned to his camp and his servants washed his lotus feet and gave him a nice seat and some milk and some palatable dishes. He took uh, his dinner and then thinking of tomorrow's program, he uh, took rest very peacefully. That's Krishna's side. Then on Kamsa's side, Kamsa could understand that his bow had been broken, his caretakers killed. He knew that now the eighth son of Devaki had come, and so his death was imminent. And he began to have inauspicious visions. Um, we can understand that these are signs of warnings of death while he was awake, while he was dreaming. He, he saw the luminaries in the sky double. He looked in the mirror and couldn't see his head. He saw holes in his shadow. The trees appeared to be gold. He saw ghosts carried in a carriage drawn by donkeys. He dreamed he was going naked with a garland of flowers and smeared by oil. Well, these are all sure signs of, of death. So he could hardly sleep that night from anxiety. Um, and after the night ended, he was busy arranging for the wrestling match. And the match was announced by the beating of kettle drums. And everything was uh, decorated, flags, festoons, galleries for respectable people, uh, kings, brahmins, kshatriyas, um, reserved thrones for the kings, and seats arranged for everyone. And finally Kamsa arrived surrounded by his uh, governing executives' heads, his ministers, his secretaries, on a raised platform reserved for him. But his heart was beating. Then, the, when everything 
was ready. The wrestlers uh, walked into the arena, nicely decorated, Chanura, Mushtika, and others, with a great concert playing, and everyone's enlivened. You know, it's the sports when the uh, us, when there's a sports competition, then there are cheering fans and there are bands playing and the the, uh, the sportsmen become enlivened. So there was that sort of a scene. And the coward men who'd come with respectable coward men who came from Rindavan with Nanda, they come so welcomed them all. And they gave comes to their milk products, which they'd brought. Then they took their seats on the side of the king. There was a special platform for them also. And so the chapter ends. Any questions? Comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, we see that Kamsa is seeing the omens. And in Bhagavatam also, like Yudhishthir Maharaj sees the omens, like before disappearance of Krishna, right? So in our daily life also, right? Like sometimes we see bad dreams. And there is a book also, <coughs> Nimitta Gyan, from one of the Iskon writers. So, so there is a book known as Nimitta Gyan. Yeah. One of the devotees only, Maharaj. So how, like, as a sadhaka, like, how should we take these things? Because we are also dealing with daily life and there are moments being shot. Yeah. I'd like to hear from you. Um. How do we deal with omens? Well, that's of course a an individual question. There's no, I don't know of any ISKCON policy on omens. But these things are taken as, taken seriously in, in the Bhagavatam in many places. And when DT becomes pregnant, there are omens. There, all over the Bhagavatam, there are good omens and bad omens. When Krishna arrives to kidnap Rukmini, then there are uh, favorable omens that she perceives. So these things are there. Uh, as you said, there's a book that Prabhupada mentions in apart from the one that, you, that you've seen, there's a book in uh, mentioned in Krishna book, which is a book of omens. So, you know, these things are interpreted too by learned Brahmins and, and authorities. They'll tell you, well, that's a good omen, that's a bad open omen. If you see a, a cow accompanied by her calf, that's a good omen. You see a cow with a full bucket of milk, that's a good omen. Empty bucket, I think that's a bad omen. And in this way, there are uh, good and bad omens, which of course now are all dismissed by the uh, rationalists as being superstitious rubbish. But there's, uh, there are such things. And uh, a lot more also that the rationalists um, dismiss as rubbish, but which the followers of Vedic culture understand. The during after Srila Prabhupada's disappearance, um, in the years when Prabhupada was being um, 
rather his position was being neglected and the there were others who were being given great attention. The Prabhupada Samadhi was under construction, but it was taking a long, long time because, you know, there was no money for it and money's coming slowly and, you know, it just wasn't a high priority. Meanwhile, there's, you know, people living in, in opulence. And during those days of construction, uh, there was a vulture that would land on the, mm, what would you say, the, the tower or the, the pinnacle of the samadhi. Every day this vulture would come and perch on, on Prabhupada's samadhi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here, here in Vrindavan, every day, uh, I saw personally, every day a vulture would come and uh, perch on Srila Prabhupada's Samadhi Mandir. Now, you don't have to be a, uh, a learned Brahmin or a, you don't need a book to read that one. Uh, anyone can understand uh, that this was not an auspicious sign. Another time I was in Govardhan, and I was thinking about um, some offenses that were being committed to an important Vaishnava. And I was sort of, I was very disturbed by it. And I was walking outside the temple wall, not outside the compound wall, but outside the temple wall. At that time, the temple was under construction and the deities were in a small structure in a... Uh, yeah, in a small structure in the courtyard. Those who know the Govardhan Ashram where Tulsi now is, that area. So I was walking outside in that temple area and I was thinking about this uh, offensive behavior. What to do, what to do. And while I was thinking about it, uh -huh, I heard this thud. And I, I knew what it was. And I came back to see. Above the deities, there was a, a fan, the usual fan. And a pigeon had flown into the fan and was lying dead on the floor in front of the deities. Would you take that as an auspicious or an inauspicious omen? So such omens are, are there. And, uh, and later, I, in fact, I asked one of my astrologer friends, Prashna, you know, what I should make of it. And uh, he confirmed what I thought I should make of it. You know, it was very inauspicious. And he calculated the time of the question. And very inauspicious. So these things are there, auspicious signs and inauspicious signs. So we may do two things. One, of course, is you see an inauspicious sign and you think, well, should I, do I need to adjust my program? You know, you're thinking of going on a long journey and there's a super inauspicious sign. You might think about postponing. Hmm? Or a very auspicious sign. You, you think, okay, let's, let's go. So, uh -huh. but more important, is always to depend on Krishna. Then even if there's something inauspicious, then it will be auspicious somehow or other that Krishna is there. And if it's auspicious, it will be more auspicious. So, um, of course, you can't run your whole life by omens and, and uh, other such things. But the, um, what was I thinking? There's a book uh, the, the Panjika, which apart from telling you the auspicious days like Ekadasis and Dvaita Acharya's appearance day, which is tomorrow, um, it tells about auspicious and inauspicious times. Uh, in, at such and such time, uh, travel to the north is uh, will not be good. 
at such and such time, uh, travel to the south will not be good. At such and such time, this will not be good. At such and such time, that will not be good. So our Pradumna Prabhu had a copy of this. He was traveling with Srila Prabhupada. And sometimes when the assistants of Prabhupada were making plans, Pradumna would be there with his panjikans. We shouldn't, I don't know, I don't think we should go to uh, you know, Chandigarh at this time because, you know, better uh, you know, wait till tomorrow or whatever it is because the panjika would say it was inauspicious. And at one point Prabhupada said, if you go by that book, he said, you can't do anything. Uh, you can't do anything. So you don't want to be ruled by uh, omens and omens and omens. But an intelligent person takes, uh, you know, just as like, you, you see the clouds in the sky and, 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 uh, and you, hear light, you hear thunder and so on. It's a, a sign. You, anyone can tell what material nature is up to. You don't need a weatherman. So the, those who know the science, by seeing omens, can understand something. But the, the final thing is that with Krishna, everything becomes auspicious, and without Krishna, everything's inauspicious. Is that okay? We shouldn't be distracted from Krishna consciousness by omens and astrology and and numerology and uh, and the weather and and uh, uh, even by uh, the upheavals of mm, mm, this or that political blah blah. Finally, we ultimately we have to depend on Krishna. Otherwise, everything's inauspicious. But okay. Something else? Yes? It's a slight comment and then question as well. Mm. I found it interesting how Kubja or Trivakra, her other name, is she said it says that she felt obliged to Krishna after his turning her. Um, and uh, I was just thinking it's a nice reflection for me to think about all the times that I could be obliged to Krishna <laughs> you know uh, so yeah and so that's my little comment and yeah <laughs> yes gratitude there is Krishna and then and then uh, so she 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 uh, she then gets, so she first gets turned and then she continues her service. Am I understanding that correctly? That she's continuing her service because, yes, Krishna is embarrassed, but she's even more embarrassed by uh, her proposition in, in a public setting. Um, this is, it doesn't say that, she forgets everything. But uh, it, it is it is embarrassing, is what I'm saying, uh, and I I'm, and I'm considering this as a continuation of her service, of her devotion, uh, and is that correct? And, yeah. She would rendered some service to Krishna by providing sandalwood pulp, and the result was that her attraction to Krishna Im increased. Uh, what is that? Bhayat snehat. Kamat snehat, krodhat, bhayat snehat. One may be attracted by lust, by anger, by uh, fear. Somehow or other, one thinks of Krishna. That's fortunate. So clearly, here she was attracted to Krishna because of his beauty, and now she's beautiful too. So, uh, these lusty thoughts are, are there. Uh, not only lusty thoughts, but she's basically offering a proposition that you come to my house. So, uh, yes, 
uh, still it was with the idea of service. Not exactly in the mood of pure devotional service because she had some desires to be satisfied. When we, came, when we come to the gopis, they have no desires for their own enjoyment. Their only desire was to please Krishna. So that's Anakul, um, what is that? Anya um, Vilashita Shunyam. No other desire but to please Krishna. But this um, Kubja, she had some desire. She wanted to satisfy her senses also. So that's still counted as service, but not pure devotional service. Is that okay? Hmm. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I've heard a backstory about Kubja that um, she was Suparnaka in the previous life. And she approached Ram, Lord Ram Chandra. Um, with lusty desires. She wanted, but then, because Lord Ramchandra didn't, um, or he's not in that, uh, how do you say? Yes, Ekapatni Vatna. So, he did not uh, accept her proposal. But then later on, she was born as Kubja. And it's somehow similar to the Putana story, that although she... So th th this means that anybody who approaches the Lord in any capacity gets some uh, wonderful result. That's... Um, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> I think I, well, when I was younger, I saw it on um, one of these... Uh, uh, Krishna... Krishna serials. So then they showed this. Uh, I mean, I can't uh, upashastra what to do, but I'll I'll have to we'll have to research it. But it seems plausible. But um, yeah. yeah. Just a, we can't hundred percent rely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, when Akrura was bringing Krishna and Balram to Mathura, in between he saw, he sees the vision of Mahavishnu getting worshipped by many demigods in water. So was that vision created specifically for Akrura or was it a Leela which manifested, appeared in front of Akrura? Some return. Some vision especially created for Akrura or was that some pastime which Mahavishnu does and it just got manifested in front of the eyes of Akrura? What's the difference? I don't understand. Yeah. 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 So it was, it can be a vision also, just like... No, just a vision but nothing's really there. Yes. It's not I don't see it specified in the text whether he was a, whether it was all in his mind, which is essentially what you're saying. It was just a vision, or whether it was actually there. I always assumed that it was there that it, that he had this vision because it was presented in front of him. But that's just my assumption. We'd have to again look and see what the acharyas are saying and so on. But effectively, they're the same. This is, it's fact. Whether it's factually Mahavishnu is actually there and, and doing these things, or whether Akura is just seeing this without anything really there to see, the, the, the tattva is the same, the, the conclusion is the same. But Brahma ever uh, worships Mahavishnu sometimes? But Does Brahma ever, of course, Brahma worship? He can't even create without worshipping Mahavishnu. I mean, I, I don't know. 
I heard that he goes to Shiro Dakshai or Karno Dakshai, Vishnu, Brahma generally, but hmm? to Mahavishnu also he, he can approach Brahma. Brahma? Mahavishnu? No. That's beyond his scope. He's just in charge of one universe. So Brahma was the, also there in that uh, past time which Akrura saw that Brahma. Oh, I see. I see, right. So this is Mahavishnu and Brahma's there. Good point. Hmm? Or was it Garbhatakshay Vishnu? You want to look it up and see? Just says Vishnu. But says Lakshmi massaging his feet also. In any case, generally Brahma approaches Garbhadakshay Vishnu and he says Mahavishnu. Hmm. There you are. I don't have any further thought about it. Again, whether the Acharyas say something, I don't know. Should we see if there's anything in... I don't see anything in the in the BBT purports about this. Um, we have Prabhupada looking further to see if there's anything to be found. But um, no. something to puzzle over. Something else? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we heard that Krishna would never give something to the devotee which would be an obstacle on the path of bhakti, but here we see that he gives beauty. He would not give, he would not give such a benediction or... Well, the 
obstacles are presented to his energies. Material energy certainly presents obstacles to emotional circumstances. So my question is that he gave this beauty to uh, to this lady and she immediately became lusty and proposed to him. So how to understand that? that how was it beneficial for her? He gave her beauty and she became lusty. So how was that beneficial for her? Well, it was beneficial because she was attracted to Krishna. It wasn't, what's the word, an obstacle to devotional service. She had, a, you can say, another approach to, to serving Krishna. But it, it wasn't an obstacle. The only obstacle is that her she didn't have complete purity of heart. She still had some self-interest. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, seems like uh, from the way Krishna addresses uh, Kubja in regards to giving her a chance to serve him, that he's not really forcing her. The language he uses is like, I think you should. He doesn't say, you must serve me. He says, I think you should offer this to us. And then if you do, you know, there'll be a reward for you, basically. It seems like Krishna consciousness is like nothing is forced. It's like the opportunity is there, but there's nothing forced upon the the person in order to serve Krishna. It's an opportunity, basically. Krishna doesn't force. Well, Krishna doesn't make you serve him. But Prabhupada says Krishna demands. Prabhupada, in the introduction to Bhagavad Gita, as it is, when Krishna says Sarva Dharma and Prabhupada said Krishna demands that we surrender. Um, so, of course, we don't like that. We like to hear that everything is, you know, but Prabhupada said Krishna demands it. Nonetheless, at the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, you taste the seed to Thakuru. Hmm? Uh, as you like, you can do. If you act according to false ego, you'll be lost. That's yadahankarama shritya nayotya iti manyase mityaisha vyavasaya ste prakritam swam niyokshiti. Even if you if you don't listen to me, nashoshasi vinankshasi, you'll be finished. You'll be lost. And so you taste to see the Now you can do as you like. You can be lost, or you can be you can engage in devotional service. Um, so, yes, Krishna gives, there's always choice, there's always freedom of choice, it may be tiny freedom of choice, but it's always there. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, just a follow-up on this. Uh, like Krishna is demanding, right? So is that a higher principle? For example, yeah. so for example, basically, there are mentors or spiritual masters in our movement. And if there, there is a, like if spiritual master is demanding something, so should we be like very, should we consider ourselves as very fortunate? That is, yeah. <coughs> because spiritual master also is like different for different disciples, right? So. We sort of like to have a, a um, modern zeitgeist, a modern um, 
mindset in which the guru is a person who offers you choices and always respects your your inclinations and desires and tailor makes everything to what will best suit your uh, and your what what you what you, the way you're inclined um, and of course he has his preferences but he always uh, is careful to take into account what you want to do well what would you like to do um, so we have that sort of mindset that the, that the guru should be very after all he's very loving and he's very spiritual so he should be very soft and gentle and that's not the picture that Shastra presents the disciples called Shisha from Shastatu Shast means control uh, there's Shastra the, the books that control your life and if you don't follow Shastra then there's Shastra there's weapons hmm. and Shisha comes from the same root the person who agrees to be controlled by the spiritual master Shisha Siet Shisha stay Teham Shadi Mam Tuam Prabhupada now I surrender to you so when we surrender that means I'll do as you say so there are certain demands no intoxicants no gambling no meat eating illicit no illicit sex you must chant 16 rounds a day you must do this you must do that these are essentially demands the spiritual master is not so, would it be okay with you if you uh, so the, the spiritual master makes demands of the disciple and that's good for the disciple the, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master that means the spiritual master gives orders Prabhupada said we should follow the orders of the spiritual master Krishna as if in military discipline the, the commanding officer doesn't come into the barracks and say men would it be alright with you if you know he, he barks orders So the spiritual master gives some orders to the disciple and when the disciple receives the orders of the spiritual master that's his good fortune uh, provided he agrees to follow hmm? to disobey the orders of the spiritual master is offensive and not fortunate so not that well but I think but Guru Maharaj what I wanted I was you know course there may be some discussion but basically what the spiritual master says he's it, it, it controls that's what we do when we accept a spiritual master we we say well I'll, I'll go by what you say instead of what what I think I'll go by what you want instead of what I want uh, because that will be good for me Yes. Hare Krishna. Um, <clears throat> connecting to this theme of Guru, uh, we read in this chapter how death is approaching and there were some signs and of course for Guru Maharaj there are also some signs. I was wondering for our Guru Maharaj there are also some signs. Um, so I was wondering, what could our prayer be when an elevated soul is about to leave the planet? Because I guess these prayers are a little different than prayers we have for conditioned souls. I don't know that I'm in a position to tell you exactly what you should pray. Um, it, it, in part that depends on your own heart uh, I don't have like a prescribed prayer in Shastra it said when the spiritual master is leaving you chant this verse but some thoughts that come to mind is that, mm, 
Of course, Prabhupada had us pray that, um, well, that was a different question, really, because there was some prospect that Prabhupada might or might not stay. But in, in this case, what can you pray? Of course, you can pray to be the eternal servant of your spiritual master. That's the most important thing. Uh, that's the most important thing. The Trying to think what's appropriate, given that the spiritual master is in the superior position. For a person in a lesser position than us, we pray for this, for that, for this, for that. But when he's in the superior position, of course we can pray that everything will be a glorious success. Prabhupada, we heard that from Abhiram Prabhu in the class in the temple a few days back. That Prabhupada said, whatever else happens, it should be glorious. And Abhiram knew what Prabhupada was, had in mind, but he wanted to hear Prabhupada say it. He said, what is that, Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, my death. Hmm. In a general way, we can pray that everything will be auspicious. I don't have further thoughts. Prayers. Uh, except that from the heart. And keeping in mind who we are, who he is, and who Krishna is. I don't have a specific thing to tell you, I don't think. Maharaj, I was thinking from a different angle to that question is that, um, and you also mentioned it about the modern Zaitgeist or the way we expect um, the Guru to reciprocate with us. So that gave me the thought that 
one, we have the tendency to present our problems to the Guru. Um, I've heard Guru Maharaj say that, uh, paraphrasing, bring, bring me solutions. So part of the worry of, uh, that we give our spiritual master is probably by not following or not following correctly or you know, not showing that we are capable enough to um, carry on the legacy. So, to carry the, sorry? I heard about that term, part of the part of the, um, the, the worry or or or, or um, that I, I could say Indian word tension that we give um, is by not yeah by not doing that. So I think I, I'm 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 just I don't know the mind of the guru, but um, they might have a feeling that how will the I think Srila Prabhupada also exhibited that that how will this movement go on like this. Yeah, we should, apart from prayer, we should think that now what will I do? Uh, maybe I haven't followed so well in the past, or maybe I bothered the spiritual master with so many problems, or maybe um, whatever. So now what am I going to do? Am I going to, um, well, I should serve. That, that determination should be there that in the physical absence of the spiritual master I should serve with either great, even greater determination uh, not that when he's here I serve and when he leaves I go off and do something else uh, or I, I slack off but uh, in his presence I serve and in his absence I serve and then he's never absent Ideally, Prabhupada said, you, he, the father wants to see that the, the son exceeds, the, exceeds him, you know, doubles the business, expands things. But at least Prabhupada said, maintain. So, Maharaj gave some indications. I think the last meeting, he'd do, you know, do something revolutionary, go out there and, you know, don't be just dull, go out there and do something. Uh, according, you know, maybe big, maybe small, according to your size, but go out and don't be, uh, go out and do something. Uh, push things forward. So there's a, there's a wealth of instructions. So take them to heart. <coughs> Shall we stop here and have kirtan? And who's leading kirtan today? She's chanting, okay. She has a question. Has a question. Well, if everybody has questions, but we just, we just close the questions. You'll be here tomorrow? Okay, you can ask the questions. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 श्रील प्रपात की जय एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रपात की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव बिंद की जय नाम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासदि गौर भक्त बिंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंज राधा कुंजगिरि गोवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप धाम की जय जगन्नाथ पुरी की जय गंगमयी की जय जमनमयी की जय तुलसी देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय समवेता भक्त वृंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असेंबल डिवोटीज गौर प्रेमानंदे